Hello, my name is Kristen Anderson. Welcome to my wonderful studio in the beautiful forest. I work in sterling silver and 18 karat gold and vitreous transparent enamels. I actually started as a, as a painter, as an artist, and then I discovered uh, the delights of metalsmithing. One of the reasons that I uh, got into metalsmithing is because the tools are so wonderful. And I really enjoy pushing metal around and decided that I wanted to try to combine the painting techniques with metal. I went to Norway to learn the kind of enameling that they did there, uh, and I got a job in a factory. At the factory, they had a, a die-making department and two story-high drop-forge machines, which produced their silver pieces. When I got back to the United States, I didn't have either of those things, and furthermore, I wasn't interested in doing the same thing over and over again anyway. So I started cutting out designs in a silver sheet and then soldering them down to a solid back piece uh, so that there were resulting uh, um, depressed areas. And this became to be called saw and solder champlevé. In brief, the process is to make a drawing. I do my drawings on paper and glue them down to the silver with rubber cement. And then to cut it out in sterling silver, and the top layer is the design, and then it's soldered to a bottom layer. And then, of course, you have to file the edges. And I always like to shape things a little bit. And then the brackets or the pin backs or whatever have to be soldered on. All of the soldering has to be done before the enameling starts. Then once the piece is ready for enameling, it gets a nitric acid dip uh, to get rid of the fire scale that develops on sterling silver. Then you, you lay a layer of enamel and fire it, and uh, then another layer and fire it. Then the whole surface gets ground off smooth, and then there's a finish fire. It takes a while. <laughs> and after that, you have to polish the silver. If you want to come study with me, this is basically what you'll be learning. Today I'm going to show you how to make these small simple pendants in sterling silver and vitreous transparent enamel. One of the things I emphasize in all my work is safety and not hurting oneself. So whenever we drill a hole, we first we use a center punch and we just go like that, bonk, bonk. And that means that the drill is not going to wander around and go somewhere where we don't want it. Now a little lubricant is always a good idea. And then we just put down and go. And that's done. And then you just take it apart. At this point, I always like to peel off the paper. Now we're going to do some filing. It's called a ring clamp. You can clamp all kind of stuff with it, not just rings. <laughs> but it helps you hold things steady. And one of the secrets with filing is finding a shape that fits what you want to achieve. There, that's better. All right, now I'm just searching for the file that's going to be the right shape for what I want to achieve. I'm going to clean up our little waves here. Okay, so this is going to be our top layer, okay? And this is going to be our bottom layer. So we're going to cut this out, and it doesn't hurt to have it be a little bigger. You can use a scribe to mark the outline of the top piece onto the bottom piece. Here is the bottom piece cut out. We don't have to worry about the edges not matching yet because we're going to file them uh, smooth after they're soldered together. In the interest of safety, do notice my high-tech face screen. 
Now I like to burr the back of the piece because it gives a nice consistent texture and then I don't have to polish it. Okay, all done. I'm gonna stamp this now with my signature, Kristen, which is a registered trademark. And then I stamp Sterling, the copyright symbol, and the year. Now, I already know that this is gonna be a rainbow. So I always like to have rain in my rainbows, all right? So I'm gonna texture the, this area here like rain, okay? So now this carving, can you get the shimmer? This carving will show through the transparent enamel color, okay? Now this one is gonna be a kind of a shell shape, so I'm going to carve it. This is the top of the top piece. And this is the underside of the top piece. And where the solder is gonna flow between these two layers, this has to be very, very clean. So we're gonna sand it. Until it's nice and bright everywhere. The solder will not flow on dirt or oxide or grease. So now that goes over here with the shiny side up that we're going to flow the solder on. And this method of soldering is called sweat soldering. The top side of the bottom piece goes here. Now pick up solder pieces and you have to guesstimate how much is enough and now we're going to heat this piece so that the, the piece gets hot enough that the solder will flow onto it we're not melting the solder well the thing is there cannot be any gaps because if they are flux and oxides will come bubbling out and the piece is a total loss now we're heating from the bottom because the bottom piece is thicker and larger than the top piece. And we could probably melt the top piece into a ball before the solder would flow onto the bottom piece. So we have to get the bottom piece hot. All right, now the solder's flowing right along these edges here. In the pickle pot. That's an acid solution that takes off the flux and some of the oxides. Gets them nice and bright and shiny again. We've taken these out of the pickle, and then we're going to cut the edges off. And then we're going to dome them a little bit and file them and make them nice. So I've got a nice little depression there. Okay. Now, you see how it catches the light so much better? Because it's curved now. This is filing the edges. Now again, we use the file according to the shape that we're trying to achieve. Now, we're gonna start making the little brackets that are gonna go on the back of them for pendants, okay? So we're gonna come over here to our nice little pounding surface. And we want to bend these around, but it's going to be hard to bend it. Hammering makes the silver hard, so we anneal it with heat, making it easy to bend. Silver is a little bit delicate. You don't want to get it red. It's, it's glowing a little bit. OK? All right, now in the pickle. So here's bending the bracket. And then we hammer it a little. Okay, so he's got a good fit top and bottom.
There we go. Now we're getting it. Capillary action. Ain't it grand? Well, here we are, our two little pieces ready for enameling with their brackets on the back. And we've checked very, very carefully along this edge here to make sure that there's no gaps anywhere. Because if there are, there's no saving it to use it for casting. <laughs> so <clears throat> now we go over to the sink. So here's our two little pieces. And here's some of our enamel that we're going to rinse it real well before we start using it. Now, when you get enamels fresh from the factory, they need a lot of cleaning. But I've, had the, I've cleaned these several times, so we're just going to give them a, a quick rinse. Now, gonna have, I like to have the water running a little bit so I can <coughs> rinse the tool off. So we just pour some water. This is distilled water, incidentally, not just drinking water distilled water and so we're just trying to get whatever dust may be off the top of this to make sure that we have the, the clarity and brilliance that we want from the transparent enamel it has to be very very clean then we're going to swirl it around a little bit and before you stick your tool in here you always rinse it off okay so we're swirling and then pour the water off you see that water is pretty clear because I've used this enamel already, so I know it's clear. Pour that off. Then add a little bit more water. Pour that off. And you want about that much water in the Petri dish. And then you rinse off the lid and put the lid on it. So here we are. We're back from the sink. You want to organize your palette. Now, you can do it however you like, okay? Because when you're busy, it's real easy to put your, your tool in the wrong color if it's not in a, in a place that you're familiar with. The other thing you want to do is you want to keep records whoops, of, your, of, of your tests and your, and your experiments. But then when I'm doing a new piece, I don't have to do all of this all over again. If I change it some, you know, at least I know where I've started from. The reason for the nitric acid dip is many of you know that when you heat sterling silver, you get a copper oxide skin called fire scale. Okay? Now, it's critical to get rid of that for the colors to be brilliant. So um, this is my highly technical <laughs> acid handling setup. Turn the fan on. Mm -hmm. And there's a fan crossing the sink and a fan going out above the sink. So we're getting rid of the fumes pretty efficiently. See how shadowy that is? We gotta get rid of that. And in it goes. It's important to wiggle this without splashing. The acid is quite expensive, so you want to get the most out of it that you can. Now this takes at least three dips. And when you take it out of the acid, you have to do a really fast plunge okay, into uh, cold running water. And we dry it off before we put it back in the acid. And it's hard to see, but there is still a shadowiness here. And you gotta get rid of that, or else the colors will just be muddy. You're gonna have to dip it as much as it takes. It's just, usually it's about three. And that quick plunge is really important. Yeah, now that looks good. It has a kind of a glow to it. You see how it, it catches the light? See, that's gonna show through the transparent enamel. That's what we're looking for. So here we got our little pieces. We're going to walk over to the enameling bench. OK, now these are the tools, basically, that we use for, um, in English, this is called wet packing. <laughs> so and if you come to have a study with me, we'll make some of these out of coat hanger wire. OK? So the way we start, You always wipe your tool off before you stick it in any color because you really don't want to get any mixing up because it'll end up somewhere where you don't want it. Lots of times I'll have a drawing, but I know what I'm doing with this one, so I'm not even going to bother with that. And the whole secret is controlling the water.
I'm going to dry this a little bit. And then I'm going to physically push the enamel into a nice clean line. You want a nice clean curve here. Now, in order to get wet enamel to lie back down on this, this has to be wet again. I pick up a little drop of water and I just put it down there. Bonk. And it suffuses the whole the whole laid enamel. Okay. So now I'm going to start with the color. The first layer is the most important because a lot of the second layer will be ground off anyway. Now I've observed that there is often a shaft of light, which of course is making the rainbow. Okay, here comes the gray again. Now we're done laying the enamel. Now we're gonna dry this, and it's important to press gently the towel down onto the enamel, and most of the water will come out. The enamel stays put and doesn't try to flow up into the towel. Now we're gonna make sure our tool is clean. We're gonna pack it without squishing it, because we just spent all this time getting these nice clean stripes. We want them to stay the way they are, okay? This has to go up here on top of the kiln. And while that one's drying, we're going to pick up the second one and start playing with it. I want a nice smooth curve here. And if you just tilt it and tap it a little bit, it actually sinks down against the edge very nicely and smoothly. Okay, and I'm going to pick up a little dot. And then a dot of white. And I wipe my tool off. And now I'm picking up a dot of the dark. Smaller and smaller. And I want this one to blend a little. See that kind of chevron pattern? Now we're going to dry this. And we're going to press gently. And the water draws out into the towel. And now just press it in place. Now the rainbow piece goes into the kiln. The first layer does not have to be fired smooth. In fact, it's better if it isn't. There's no set time. You just have to look. And it's starting to fuse already. So we look at the beautiful tree. And some people count. OK, that's enough for the first layer. as it cools off, the colors come true, because the glowing is going away. And now we're going to do layer number two, and we want to follow as closely as possible layer number one. And the second layer is to build up the color so that you have the brilliance and the richness of the color, even though most, a lot of it gets ground off to get the, the surface smooth. Now it has to dry, and I'll do the second layer on the shell piece.
we're going to dry this, right? And then we're going to pack it. We can put the rainbow piece back in. So we're going to fire this baby. And we wait once again. OK, now it's ready. Now look at the colors. Did you see the orange? Okay, we didn't have that before. That's the color that has to be laid on top of another color. Now the shell piece goes back into the kiln. Okay. Finished the two layers of the enameling now, so we're gonna put the lids back on so they don't get dusty. We're waiting for the pieces to cool. So we can start grinding on them. Ta-da! This is grinding, the really fun part. And we don't want to grind off too much. This is a pretty coarse wheel. So now we're going to move over to here, which is, I think it's a 400. Anyway, it's a diamond wheel. Now I'll use the diamond pad grinders. Is that cool or what? What you're doing with this is smoothing the silver and smoothing the surface of the enamel so that it, it fires really, uh, really nice and smooth. The process of polishing is basically the process of putting finer, finer scratches into a surface until you can't tell there's scratches there anymore. We got the first one done, now we'll do the second one. You gotta be really careful about not doing too much. And there's enamel up over the edge of the silver here. Okay, that's what we wanna get. We wanna get that off and we wanna make the silver surface flush with the enamel surface. Okay, now I'm going over here on the diamond wheel. Now we're going to go to the pads again. OK, now we've finished the grinding. We're going to scrub them a little bit. And then we're going to put them in the ultrasonic cleaner over here to get all of the any kind of grit or anything out of them. Make sure you get rid of all the dish detergent. It has to go over here for 10 to 15 minutes, they're face down. Enamel is glass, so there are always little bubbles in it. When you grind the enamel, the tops come off the bubbles, which make pits, and the pits collect grit from the grinder. So the ultrasonic cleaner removes the grit from the little pits. Now they're clean, and I've dried them, and now we're gonna go for the finish fire. But because these pieces are different from each other, I'll fire them one by one. If you have pieces that are identical, you can put them all in at once. It just stays in for a few minutes. OK, that's enough. It looks done to me. Oh, yeah, it's great. And I dropped the pieces into the pickle for a few minutes. Now we're going to polish the silver. So here we go. This is the dirtiest, messiest part. <laughs> With the small buffs, I had to do this ripply part here. OK, but now it's more efficient on the bigger buffs, OK? We've got to get all the buffing compound off now. And it's just ammonia, dish detergent, and water. And we can put it in the ultrasonic again. Let it do the work. 
So here's the two pieces that we've been working on for the last two days with a chain and they're ready to go. And if you come to study with me, this is basically what you'll be learning.